Welcome to Issues and Answers for Wednesday, October 13th, 2010. Coming up on the show today, we're going to be talking about the Movember fundraiser in just a little while. Also, we'll be speaking with Lori Ackerman from SciTech North about the upcoming Innovation Awards. But it is uh, my honor to welcome into the Moose FM studios this morning the Premier of British Columbia, Gordon Campbell. It's great to be here at Moose FM. Thank you very much. And back in Fort St. John. And welcome uh, welcome to Fort St. John. What, uh, what's your visit? Uh, why are you up here? You're spending quite a bit of time. Uh... Well, we're spending, we spent yesterday and today and tomorrow we'll be in Dawson. Uh, we just wanted to come up uh, here. We've got a number of cabinet ministers. It's a very important part of the province. It's uh, an important part of our northern strategy. It's an important part of our energy strategy. And, you know, it's always a good idea to go and talk to people uh, in their communities. I was meeting with the Rotary Club today and talking to them about some of the things we've been doing and how we think we can build a better future for the province. And it's uh, one, of the, one of the joys of the job is getting to meet people where they live and where they work and talking about what they're doing, what the government's doing right, what the government's doing wrong, and how we can fix it. Now, you've called this the, the decade of the North, and what, right. I'm interested in, in hearing what your thoughts are on how northeastern British Columbia and, and this area fits into that picture. Really, uh, really an important part. Of, it's really part, you know, one of the cornerstones of our future strategy is this whole uh, northeastern energy opportunity that's here. You know, we still have a major agriculture industry here. There's still forestry that's here. We have, in British Columbia, this natural resource foundation for our economy, which is it, it creates enormous potential for the future. We are the closest port in North America to Korea, to Japan, to China. That creates enormous uh, potential. And so working with Saskatchewan and Alberta, actually, uh, as we level our playing field, as we're doing in terms of our competitive position with regard to corporate income tax, small business tax, the harmonized sales tax, all of those things, level the playing field that allow us now to attract investment and really drive an economic agenda that picks up on the, the benefits for the North. So whether it's investing in you know new health care facilities like we are in Fort St. John with the new hospital, which is on time, on budget, and opening next year, whether it's the new road infrastructure that we're investing in, the new port infrastructure, this whole northern corridor, really from Prince Rupert right through to the eastern border, uh, through to Edmonton, and then on into Saskatchewan and Alberta, is going to be a huge economic engine, not just for the province of British Columbia, but for Canada. And I think one of the things that we all have to get used to is... Canada looks to the West to lift it forward into the 21st century. Ontario and Quebec are going to have huge structural changes they've got to make in their economies. British Columbia, Alberta, and Saskatchewan can actually drive our economy forward. Really in the 21st century, similar to what the St. Lawrence Seaway did for all of Canada in the 20th century. Now, how do you see the site and sea dam fitting into that picture? Really an important part of it. Uh, so, for example, with our energy industry here, one of the things that we're looking at right now is a, a northeast transmission line, which will provide clean uh, electricity all the way up into the uh, into the, the Horn River Basin. We think that's going to be critically important, not just for communities, but for industry, for clean energy. Uh, Site C is uh, gives us a rich opportunity to export en energy north-south as well, and it really provides the foundation for a lot of the new alternative energies, whether it's uh, wind energy or other kinds of energy that need that storage capacity. So it's a very important part of our economic future in the province. Uh, we're getting on right now with the environmental assessments. We're getting on right now with the Aboriginal consultations. But we think it's really an important link uh, to our energy uh, future. We are a clean energy capital in, in North America on this continent. We want to continue to do that and to continue to build economic benefits to create social benefits and other benefits for all of us. Is Site C the best way to deal with our energy crisis? I mean, you've got Aboriginal, some First Nations groups that are opposed to this dam. You've got residents up here. Some are opposed. Some are in favor. And a lot are on the fence, I think, um, because there's some big questions yet that haven't been answered. What will the impact be to the city of Fort St. John and, and this area? Uh, are, are you confident that that really is the best and only way to, to meet our to meet our needs? Well, first, it's not the only way. There's lots of ways that we can, you can meet your needs, right? But I think it is the best way to meet our needs. It takes, a, uh, it takes advantage of a natural uh, asset that we have. In terms of a city like Fort St. John, I mean, one of the things that's really important right now is for the city itself to decide this is what's important to us and these are the benefits that we expect as a community. Uh, from the provincial perspective, I think there's no question that it, it reinforces our position as a clean energy provider. You know, we right now are importing dirty uh, fuel, uh, dirty energy into our economy. We don't want to do that. By 2016, we're going to have a clean energy economy. It's seen as an economic strength. And you know, we forget that when people look at our uh, our tax regime, our energy costs, uh, and the quality of the people we have here, 
that this is becoming, we are building exactly what we set out to build, which is a competitive advantage for all of British Columbia, which actually creates more jobs in forestry and mining and energy and all whole sorts of things. But you can't do that without surge-free, high-quality energy. Site C is one way to do that, but it's a big important part of our future because energy uh, demands are going to grow. Uh, so the question is, how do you meet those growing energy demands and how do you take advantage of the alternative energy opportunities that are there? Site C is not an alternative energy opportunity, but the wind energy that we're talking about doing here, uh, some of the run of the river energy that we're talking about doing, all of those things depend on you know adequate storage capacity. So you have what is really thought of as firm power by contractors, and that's what we, uh, that's a real value added we can have for the province. Mm -hmm. um, moving on, um, you're, you've, you've been Premier since 2001. Mm -hmm. um, we, this HST f fiasco, if we can call it that, mm -hmm. has, been, has, has certainly not been a highlight. But where do we go from here? Where do we go with your leadership and, and British Columbia and the BC Liberal Party? Well, I, I think, frankly, one of the things that's really important about the, the entire issue around the HST is the, is the messages you learn from it. So, you know, I think that we did not do a good job of explaining how we got there. Uh, how it was possible even to get there. We couldn't have got to the decision we made in July if there had not been significant changes negotiated by Ontario with the federal government. The reason we have the lowest HST in the country is because for the first time we were told you could set your own. Uh, we can actually have the HST go up or down in the future if we decide to keep it. But I think people were very clear, have been very clear. They don't like the way it happened and I think that we have an ob obligation to try and reestablish a trust with people in, in terms of that. So one of the things that we're going to do is, you know, every British Columbian has a chance to decide do they want to keep it or do they want to get rid of it. I think what's really important is to recognize what a serious issue it is, because it's a huge economic issue. You know, I have, I just was meeting with the, the Rotary this morning, and a fellow comes up and says to me, you know, for those people that think there's no benefits here, I just saved myself, I think it was $42,000 in my trucks. Uh, that makes me more competitive. I have a, a person that has a franchise down in, in the Lower Mainland who says for the first time ever he's able to compete and win in Alberta because they have the same kind of uh, you know input tax credits or they don't have them in, in Alberta. We don't have them. We do have them now in British Columbia. Uh, we're going to be on a level playing field with Ontario. So the reason the forest industry, the energy industry, mining, agriculture, small businesses across the province have said this is good for us is the same reason that, frankly, virtually every legitimate economy has said, economist that says it's good. It creates a level playing field for us, and it says this is where we can go. But people should decide for themselves whether it's best for them. And on the 24th of September, 2011, they'll get to vote, and at 50 plus 1 percent, they want to go, say they want to go back to the former PST system, you know, a duplicate system with two streams of administration, two streams of compliance, two streams of, uh, of auditing, etc. It costs the whole economy about $150 million. It costs the government itself about $30 million, which we don't have to, we don't do now with the harmonized system. That will be their choice. And what my goal is over the next number of months is to provide people with all the information they need. So I had a, a woman today that said, well, what about people on lower incomes? Well, a low-income family of four today will get a HST credit check for $920 for, you know, for the year, but quarterly checks adding up to $920. That's compared to what they had under the previous system of maybe $150 or less that they got at the end of the year. That's something people have to think about, right? It's not, it's not about fear or not fear. It's about, you know, these are the consequences of all these decisions and how they roll out. So I think we didn't do a good job with that. Having said that, I think that British Columbia, if you ask most jurisdictions, they will tell you that we are, we are on the verge of moving into a 21st century that's very exciting. I think people still want to have a government that's a free enterprise government. They still want a government that's encouraging business investment. They want a government that's encouraging job creation. And that's really what we're doing. And even the HST, the estimates are about 11 billion more of investment and about 110,000 additional jobs over the next 10 years. So those are all positives, but I recognize it's going to be a choice for people. And I'm looking forward to them making the choice that's best for them, and that's what we'll put into effect. What about, we've got a year of uncertainty now. If you're, I mean, there, there is certainly some benefits with the, with the input tax credit. Right. But now if I'm looking at spending $100,000, do I hold off until after the referendum, or do I do it now? And and, and yeah. it, does that not cause some some consequences for the economy? That uncertainty? Yeah, I think actually there's not uncertainty. I think frankly, if people want to get the benefits, they should do it now. And most major investments, they'll get significant benefits from uh, from investing now because the input tax credit is going to be there. We'll see on September 24th next year what they're going to do, and then we'll go on. I've had people say to me, well, "What about housing?" Uh, you know, I think people should understand. There's not one resale home in British Columbia that's going to be impacted by HST. 
So yes, if you're if you're buying a home that's that's valued at more than five hundred and twenty five thousand dollars, there may be some small marginal in impact, but up to five hundred and twenty five thousand dollars, not one impact of the HST. So those major acquisitions, uh, I think it makes sense to get them now, but it depends on what your what particular circumstances you're in, uh, and there's no less certainty now than there is every other year when you have a budget speech. So. I mean, you can have a budget speech where they decide they're going to increase or decrease taxes. We've been at government that's decreased taxes. Uh, personal income taxes are down by 37% on average. Corporate caps, you know, taxes are down. Small business taxes will be zero on January 1st of 2012. But every budget is a time when there are decisions that are made with regard to that. And so maybe around that, every budget, there creates some uncertainty. But there's no uncertainty with regard to this right now. Uh, what's What we'll find out is what the next step is people want to take. Very quickly, if you could, uh, one final question. Um, you hinted at, the, at your speech at UBCM about investing in transportation. Mm -hmm. uh, are you, what are you looking at for the Northeast as far as transportation investments? Well, I think there's major investments that will be taking place across the North. I think the investments are between 200 and $250 million right now that we're doing. I mean, part of our investment strategy for the Northeast is not just to access the resources that's here, but to try and make sure that uh, communities are connected here. Uh, there's a major investments that will be made from along that northern energy corridor, which whether transportation is pipeline investments or road investments or rail investments or air investments, all of those things are part of what the strategy is in the long term. You know, I think what's really important is we now have an opportunity to connect. Uh, we connect, can connect with Alberta, we can compete with Alberta and actually win on a whole bunch of uh, areas. We can actually connect with the rest of the country and transportation is a critical part of that. So. What I was really doing is, as I did in 2002, laying out a plan that says this is where we're going, this is what we're going to invest in. There's major investments that have got to be made. Uh, we're doing significant investments in the Sierra Rio they send road right now. We're looking at that and how we can improve that. We'll keep on doing that. We'll keep on working in the, the northeastern part of the province. I can tell you, Pat Bell, I don't think Pat Bell uh, has ever come without mentioning that there's another transportation improvement we need. There's another road that we could do better with. And that's good because that's how we actually lay out a plan that says this is how we can meet the needs of the people that we're trying to serve. All right. Well, thank you very much for coming in this morning and making the time to, uh, to chat with us on air. Great to, great to be here, and thanks. It's great to be back in Fort St. John. All right. Thank you very much. That is uh, Premier of British Columbia, Gordon Campbell. Thank you once again. Coming up next on the show, we're going to be speaking about the Movember fundraiser and also about the Energy Innovation Awards coming up with SciTech North. This is Issues and Answers on 100.1 Moose FM. Thank you.